Trigonometric Integrals, Level 1. In the following series of videos, we're going to study techniques for evaluating integrals that contain certain combinations of trigonometric functions, specifically those of the form sine of x raised to the power of m times cosine of x raised to the power of n dx and secant of x raised to the power of m times tangent of x raised to the power of n dx, where both m and n are positive integers. To find the antiderivative of these types of integrals, we need to use trigonometric identities to break the integrand into combinations of trigonometric functions to which you can then apply the power rule for integration by means of a u substitution. Because we're going to rely heavily on trigonometric identities, I recommend that you visit mathfortress.com and download a copy of the trigonometric identities equation sheet located in the pre-calculus section. All right. We are first going to go over trigonometric integrals involving powers of sine and cosine. Let's begin by first going over a trigonometric integral that we should already know how to do with the current techniques at our disposal. Find the integral of sine of x raised to the power of 5 times cosine of x dx. The only techniques that we currently know up to this point are u substitution and integration by parts. Notice that we have a product of two functions, so you might be tempted to use integration by parts. But for the most part, you first want to check if u substitution is a possible option. Taking a look at the integrand, we see that we can let u equal sine of x. And by taking the derivative of u with respect to x, we obtain cosine of x. Notice that this function appears in the original integral, so we have a green light to carry on with the substitution step. Replacing sine of x with u and du with cosine of x dx, we obtain the following integral in terms of u. At this point, it is just a matter of applying the power rule for integration. The integral of u to the power of 5 du is equal to 1 6 times u to the power of 6 plus c. And the final step is to replace u with sine of x as follows. Doing that, we obtain the final answer which is equal to 1 6 times sine of x raised to the power of 6 plus c. This integral was relatively easy to find because of the presence of a single cosine expression that was vital for the u substitution step to work. Keep this little detail in mind as we go over more challenging trigonometric integrals. All right, with u substitution fresh in our minds, let's go ahead and try the next example. Find the integral of cosine of x cubed dx. Okay, notice that we can't make a substitution since we don't have a single cosine of x factor. We actually have cosine of x cubed. It seems that there is no way to solve the integral with our current techniques. This is where we introduce a new technique so we can deal with these types of trigonometric integrals. Notice that the cosine function has an odd power. In this case, it's raised to the power of 3. Recall that we need a single cosine factor so that our u substitution step works out. The way we obtain a single cosine factor is by breaking apart the expression into two distinct factors, as follows. One factor is squared, and the other one is raised to the power of 1. So now we have that single cosine factor we desperately needed. Now we need an expression in terms of a sine so that we can go ahead and use u substitution by letting u equal sine of x, just the way we solved the first example. Is there a way to rewrite cosine squared in terms of sine? The answer is yes. This is where trigonometric identities come into play. We can convert the remaining cosine squared factor to an expression involving sine, using the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, by solving for cosine squared within the identity itself. Doing that, we have that cosine squared is equivalent to 1 minus sine squared. So now we can go back to our integral and substitute cosine squared with this equivalent expression. We now have an expression in terms of sine and the single cosine factor that we need to carry out the u substitution step. So we go ahead and let u equal sine of x. Then we find the derivative of u with respect to x. Then we solve for cosine of x dx and apply the substitutions throughout. Doing that, we have the following expression. Then it's just a matter of finding the integral by using the power rule for integration. The integral of 1 is just equal to u. 
and the integral of u squared is equal to one third times u cubed, and we add the constant c. The last step is to replace all the expressions that contain the variable u with sine of x. Doing that, we obtain the final answer equal to sine of x minus one third times sine of x cubed plus c. So it turns out that the way we solve these types of trigonometric integrals is by making use of trigonometric identities and u substitution. All right, let's go over the next example. Find the integral of sine of x raised to the power of six times cosine of x raised to the power of three dx. All right, once again, notice that the cosine factor is raised to the power of three. It's an odd number. In addition, we also have a sine of x term. In this case, we have sine raised to the power of six, which is an even power. We have our expression in terms of sine. All we need is a single cosine factor. Like in the previous example, let's go ahead and break apart cosine cubed into cosine squared times cosine. This way, we obtain that single cosine factor that is needed for the u substitution step. Now that we have our single cosine factor, let's go ahead and rewrite cosine squared by using the Pythagorean identity. This way, we have an expression in terms of sine only. Doing that, we have the following. Now that we have our single cosine factor, and the rest of the expression is in terms of sine only, let's proceed with the u substitution step. So we let u equal sine of x, and take the derivative of u with respect to x. Then we solve for cosine of x dx, since this expression appears in the original integral. Then it's just a matter of substituting the expressions throughout. Doing that, we obtain the following. Then we go ahead and distribute u to the power of 6. Next, we use the power rule for integration to find the given integral. Doing that, we obtain the following expression. The last step is to substitute the variables that contain u with sine of x. Doing that, we obtain the final answer equal to 1 7 times sine of x raised to the power of 7 minus 1 9 times sine of x raised to the power of 9 plus c. Notice that in this example, the power of sine was even and positive. In addition, the power of cosine was odd and positive. In general, we try to write an integrand involving powers of sine that are even and powers of cosine that are odd in a form where we have only one cosine factor and the remainder of the integrand in terms of sine. With the help of the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, we can convert back and forth between even powers of cosine and sine. For this case, we want to use cosine squared equals one minus sine squared. This way we can rewrite even powers of cosine into even powers of sine. After that, we let u equal sine of x and carry on with the u substitution step. And finally, we solve the integral in terms of u by first expanding the expression if needed and applying the power rule for integration. This is the first of four cases that we will cover throughout the video series. The one described here is when the power of sine is even and the power of cosine is odd. All right, let's end the video by going over the final example. Find the integral of sine of x raised to the power of four times cosine of x raised to the power of five dx. We notice that this integral contains powers of sine and cosine. We also see that sine has an even power and cosine has an odd power. We always want to deal with a function that has an odd power. In this case, we are going to break apart the cosine expression into a single factor and a factor raised to the power of four, as follows. The next step is to rewrite cosine raised to the power of four as cosine squared raised to the power of two. This way, we can substitute the cosine squared term with one minus squared, as follows. Having isolated a single cosine factor and converted the remaining cosine factors into an expression in terms of sine, we go ahead and carry on the substitution step by letting u equal sine of x. Then we take the derivative of u with respect to x and solve for cosine of x dx. Next, we go ahead and substitute these expressions throughout. Doing that, we obtain the following integral. Next, let's go ahead and expand the binomial, followed by distributing u raised to the power of 4. Doing that, we obtain the following expression. 
Next, let's go ahead and use the power rule for integration to find the integral of the given expressions. Lastly, let's go ahead and replace the variable u with sine of x, as follows. Doing that, we obtain the final answer equal to 1 fifth times sine of x raised to the power of 5 minus 2 sevenths times sine of x raised to the power of 7 plus 1 9 times sine of x raised to the power of 9 plus c. All right. In our next video on trigonometric integrals, we will go over the second case when the power of sine is odd and the power of cosine is even.